Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. Today we want to talk about a, a really famous measurement bridge. It's called bridge. It's called Wheatstone Bridge. Yeah. So there's a really famous measurement circuit, and I want to explain a little bit how it is working. All right. So actually, the Wheatstone Bridge consists of of four uh, resistors. All right. The usual way to draw it is a little bit different. However, I want to, to draw it that way, since I think we can then better understand how this thing is working. This usually destroyed like that. Hopefully you see it's it's equivalent. Alright? So we do have here a supply voltage. U0. We have here two resistors, R1 and R2. We also have here R3 and R4. All right. And at each resistor, we have a corresponding voltage. And here, this is the voltage we are measuring. This is UA. Yeah? This is the, the output voltage, the voltage we want to, to determine. Okay. Well, let's think about this. Yeah? Here we have, we, we pretend this to be open, so we are using, we are using a really, really, uh, high input um, resistance voltage measurement system. Huh? Let's try to calculate this. Okay, so here I, I1, huh? the current I1. What is this? This is the sum of these two, two resistance series. Yeah? So it's U0 divided by R1 plus R2. All right. And I3 is U0 divided by R3 plus R4. All right. And now, what is U2? U2 equals R2 multiplied, since this is the same current, I1. And what is U4? U4 is R4 multiplied by I4. I3, of course. <laughs> I3. Yeah. And U1 is R1 multiplied by I1. And U3 is R3 multiplied by I3. Okay. Then we do have the case that u i u one plus u two must be u zero, and u three plus u uh, four 
must also be u0. This is always also the case. These two in combination must be the same. Yeah? And what is ua? ua is this voltage. Yeah? Here if we make here if we make here Kirchhoff's law, u1 minus ua minus u3 is 0 volt. Yeah? This means ua is u1 minus u3. Good. So let's let's adjust this. Yeah? Let's adjust this. Let's let's put those things in. Yeah. So this equals R1 multiplied by I1 minus R3 multiplied by I3. Now put this in. Yeah. So this equals R1 multiplied by U0 divided by R1 plus R2 mm -hmm. and now minus R3 multiplied by U0 divided by R3 plus R4. And now I divide those, those, these things divided by u0. So I say ua divided by u0 equals. And what is happening here? This divided by u0 is 1 divided, and this is also 1 divided. So actually we have here written r1 divided by r1 plus r2 yeah, minus r3 divided by r3 plus R4. This is the output voltage compared to the input voltage with the with the uh, resistances. Okay? So what if we want to have UA equals zero, yeah? We realize that this is only, only the case if uh, R1 divided by R2 equals R3 divided by R4. Yeah? This is clear, hopefully. Yeah? This, if those two ratios, the, 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 the voltages are dividing the same voltage, yeah? because the sum of them are are always u0 and they are dividing the same voltage into two parts. And like a voltage divider, this depends on the ratio of the resistances. And if the ratio of the resistors on both sides are equal, then this and this voltage are equal. And if, if this and this voltage are equal, then here is zero. Okay? Here is zero. Yeah. So actually we are defining a k. Yeah? This means this is R2 divided by R1, and this is also an R4 divided by R3. So this is 1, uh, one divided by K this year. Yeah. Yeah. Then UA is 0. Alright? And now, uh, assume, we assume, I mean, now we have uh, now we have written what we need if this is zero. No? And now we assume R1 yeah, is not R1, 
plus, plus a small change, delta R1. Yeah? So we are not only having R1, we're also having a small change in, yeah? so this is slightly changing, slightly. This is important. Yeah? This is important. So let's try to solve this. Yeah? So we have ua divided by u0 equals r1 plus delta r1 divided by r1 plus delta r1 plus r2 minus r3 divided by r3 plus r4. This stays the same. Yeah? And I divide this now by r1. Yeah? So I say r1 plus delta r1 divided by r1. Yeah. I extend this R1 plus delta R1 plus R2. I divide in this fraction, I divide both sides with R1 and here I divide by R3. Here it even looks a little bit funny. But it's meaningful, you will see. So here we have 1 plus delta R1 divided by R1. Yeah? And here we have 1 plus delta R1 divided by R1. And here we have R2 divided by R1. And here we have minus 1 divided by 1 plus R4 divided by R3. Alright. This we already know. This is K here. Yeah? So here we have this K. And this thing here, I call V. Yeah. This is somehow reflecting how disturbed R1 is. Yeah. What is the change of R1 depending uh, in, in comparison to R1? Yeah. Alright, so let's let's substitute those things. So we have then ua divided by u0 equals, and then we have 1 plus v divided by 1 plus v plus k minus 1 divided by 1 plus k. Okay, now let's bring this to the same, same 1 plus v, 1 plus k minus 1 plus v plus k. Yeah, 1, I, I will write 1, then it's clear. And here we have 1 plus v plus k, 1 plus k. All right, so let's calculate this. This is 1 plus v plus k plus v k minus 1 minus v minus k divided by 1 plus v plus k, 1 plus k, okay? And here we have plus 1 minus 1 plus v minus v plus k minus k. So actually what is left here yeah, is uh, v multiplied by k divided by this whole stuff, 1 plus v plus k. 1 plus k, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now, in case v is much smaller, much smaller than 1 plus k. Yeah. So this means this distortion of the of the resistance is very tiny. Okay. This means this is. 1 divided by k, 1 plus k squared. This. Yeah. Because then this is very tiny, yeah? so it's almost the same like 1 plus k. So I can replace this with 1 plus k squared. Alright? So this is reflecting the change.
change of resistor and this is proportional. So the output voltage is proportional to the change of this resistance. So I can measure if this is a tiny, tiny change in resistance. I can measure this tiny change by measuring a tiny output voltage. How tiny it is? Let's see. This, this term here, yeah, K divided by 1 plus K. Yeah. It's the sensitivity of this thing. Yeah. This is max. If k equals 1, and then this is 1 quarter. Okay, so 1 quarter is the maximum and the maximum uh, sensitivity of this thing. So it's reflecting 1 quarter of the resistance change. And this one quarter uh, is only valid if R2 and R1 and R4 and R3, if they are all the same. Okay? If they are all the same. Yeah. And if I allow not only one resistance resistor a change, but all of them, yeah, then I realize the output, yeah, these are right in red because this is important now, the, the output voltage UA divided by U0. Yeah? I always do it like that. Yeah? This is proportional because it is now a quarter. Yeah? This is a quarter. So I'll write it maybe here as well. So this is a fourth. If K is one, this is a fourth. So we have here then V multiplied by a fourth and this is a fourth multiplied by what was V? Delta R1 divided by R1. Okay? And if I do this for all resistors, eh, I realize that I have this quarter. This quarter is still there. Eh? And then we have delta R1 divided by R1. This is this term. If we change R2, this is in but negative, yeah? but negative, minus delta R2 divided by R2. R3 is also negative. And R4 is positive again. That's it. So, whenever a resistance is changing inside this Wheatstone bridge, yeah, then the output voltage would also change yeah, with a quarter of the resistance change. And since we only have small output voltages, we can use a very, very effective and very um, accurate measurement system. Yeah? Because I already said, if we want to measure tiny things, we can use a very accurate measurement system because then the, the maximum scale value must not be that high. And if I make an error according to the maximum scale value and the maximum scale value is tiny, then I make a tiny error. If I'm using here a measurement device which could measure up to 1 million volts, I could not even determine if a resistance is changing. However, I can use a measurement device which is only measuring, I don't know, some millivolts. Yeah? Then also the error of this measurement device, the absolute error of this measurement device is very small. Yeah? And this means we can determine a resistance change with high accuracy. Okay? As long as the resistance change is relatively small to the resistance. We talked about such a thing. Huh? We talked about such a thing. We talked about the strain gauge, where it's the change of the resistance is very tiny compared to the resistance itself. Huh? So, 
if we are using this yeah, for strain cautious, we could measure strains. And this is what we are talking about in next video. Next video we are talking about what if we are replacing some of these resistors with a strain gauge. Yeah? What can we expect from this, based on this formula we just derived. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.